Are vinyl records making a comeback? In this video, I'm going to show you clips from various interviews of mine where artists and industry people share their thoughts on vinyl records, the current state of physical music sales, and more. Vinyl is making a comeback. I think the whole switch to CDs was a big, huge scam. Neil Young has proved, and he's kind of a, a genius in his own right, he's proved that the guy who did the algorithms to convert analog music to digital had imperfections in it. And so everything sounds square and small and tiny. Neil Young went back and recalculated. He put up this thing called the Ponos that will re, uh, recalculate or retranslate your music. You just plug your output into this little triangular thing that looks like a little Toblerone bar, like the little triangular <laughs> thing, and out of that into your headphones or your speakers, and your music becomes alive. It adds a second and third harmonics that sometimes you can't hear until it's missing, and you just hear the signal. But when you hear an old analog thing, there's the signal, and there's this cloud of something cool around it that's your natural th and, and your second and third harmonics that kind of just make it more listenable. It's kind of like if I pushed my finger in your face or my whole hand. There's a big difference in that, or, or, or in your chest. You know, like this thing would hurt, and a nice gentle push would feel, oh, okay. So digital music is kind of like poking you in the head and the ears, and then analog's like embracing because it's so warm. So I sense that trend. Um, the whole digital scam of having to go away from our beautiful one foot square artwork that was basically classic rock shrunk down to this little thing. The minute you open it, the lid broke off. You had to buy another lid. The whole thing was like a money grab. And then changing all of the shelves and every record, because everybody's shelves were 12 and a half inches, right? So your, your one foot square album would fit in. Those were all gone and thrown in the bins. So suddenly the guys are selling you new shelves to hold s CDs. And they make the CD package when you buy it. It's in a plastic that you need a blowtorch or a hacksaw to get into. The minute you rip open this outer package and open your lid, the hinges break off. So there's like a built-in obsolescence there that was such a rip-off of us guys who wanted to hear all our favorite music because the biggest sellers in CDs at first was us, classic rock guys. Oh, I don't need to play my old sticky fingers anymore that's all scratched. I'll buy the new digital one. And there's no more tape in cars. Tape is phenomenal. In England, there's a big resurgence of cassette tapes. You put it in, you hear the, you hear the playback like it was in the studio. It hasn't been converted and made into an MP3 or MP4 and put on this digital disc and then played in your, your radio. So uh, there is some sort of a revolution. I don't know where it'll lead. I don't know if it'll go anywhere because there's always these big powers who make these decisions and force them on us and we buy them. If you ever saw The Big Short, I just saw that. It's sickening. It's a great movie, but it shows us that, that we are out of control. When you look at the ISIS oil crisis that's going on, all this stuff seems to be basically be over religion and oil. If you look at the record business, it's all about money and manufacturing artists to make as much money as possible. And then there's still the guys like me who are true the minstrels of the time who go from village to village and play in the town square. It could be called the auditorium or the hockey rink, but we're still there playing the music that we wrote as kids and the people still come to enjoy it. So we could find a way to take this classic rock and make it and bring it back. Wouldn't, wouldn't the world be, it would certainly sound better. I wouldn't say it would be a better place, but certainly, better. certainly sound a lot better. We just came through another year and another Christmas and I've got grandkids now and all they wanted for Christmas was this magical thing that goes around. And this magical thing that you put on it, that music comes out of. Because they're so used to iPod and actual speakers and living room. So my daughter called me and said, my, my kids want a record player and records. And I said, are you kidding? Go in there. My, my parents' old Viking record players there from Eaton's that you open up. It was a radio on one side and a turntable on the other that had... 78s, 45s, and 33, and my records are still there. I also got a jukebox that plays 45. Just go and get it out of storage. And so she takes it, and her kids are going, and they put on their first record. And this is like kids who are like 10, 12, 14, 16, and they're going, wow, that sounds warm. Mom, why does that sound so warm? Well, there's tubes in there. Feel them. They're hot. Did that make any difference? Did it make the music warm? Yes, it did. And also, analog... And, and tubes and tape had second and third harmonics. The sound, we grew up on distortion. 
right? We love distortion. Elvis screaming, Little Richard screaming, the Beatles revolution, da -da -da, the guitar that starts out. That was all distortion. Suddenly it all gets cleaned up for digital because digital can't translate distortion. If you get too loud in digital, it becomes an explosion. Like I've been trying to mix a kick drum going boom, boom, and it goes pow, pow. It actually is an explosion or a big crackle. So kids now are noticing the warmth of records. I think music is in, is in fabulous health for the reasons I said with vinyl, uh, with uh, vinyl being, being up there as a format. It's incredible. I would never believe vinyl would come back, but it has. You know, on this, I mean, I know 17 year old kids who are buying Zeppelin 2 and Deep Purple in Rock and uh, Pink Floyd The Wall for massively inflated prices. But they're buying them because they're they want, doing it. they're still doing it because they want something physical. They want artwork, all the stuff that we loved when we were kids. Um, to me, it, it, it's, it's a natural, um, not progression, it's a natural return. I think it's like, it's like, with, with whole foods, it's like with, with proper food. People want to be nourished by the real thing, you know. Absolutely. I think a classic rock will stand the test of time because it, uh, the albums of that age, um, people listen to the entire product. And when they were creating the music, they, they, they spent an incredible amount of time um, creating them. And, and I don't think that the same sort of effort is put into uh, creating an album of work as happened back uh, in the day. I think, um, you know, the, these bands, the, the Led Zeppelins, the Doors, the Eagles, the Beatles, created bodies of work um, in their entirety. Now it's a singles-based mentality, and, and I just don't think it's going to stand up to, to, uh, to, the, to the classic rock of, of the 70s. The way that artists, classic rock artists specifically, released an album, it was it was a big deal. I mean, I remember going to specifically to to a Sand the Record Man in Montreal, lined up to buy a U2 album, and it, it was it was exciting. And uh, the way we'd experience a record was when they were on record and before CDs was you'd listen to them front to back and you wouldn't go and pick and go through the, the individual songs. You would listen to them as an entire album. You would, you would go through the liner notes and just dive right into it. And uh, to the point where I even listen today to some songs on the radio and when they end, in my mind, I kind of hear that next song from the band, the way it was banded on the record play. Here at Boom, we do uh, Church Up on Tuesdays. We play uh, a bunch of vinyl every, every Tuesday. And Wrote, you know, checking the lawn sales and stuff like that, picking up the old ones, and uh, and it, it really is, uh, you know, I'm back, uh, I'm buying all my favorite vinyl now. I just got like the Elmer Brothers Live, the Fillmore East. There's a, like a four record uh, set for like a hundred dollars. It's one of my favorite albums of all time, and uh, I, had, I didn't care if it was a hundred dollars. I, I wanted it, and I think people are, are are doing that again. It's like, and the quality of the vinyl is so much better now, and uh, it just sounds really good. So I, I think yeah, definitely people are going back, and and especially those those albums that you you grew up with and everyone's got those ones that you know they maybe didn't mean that much to anybody else but to you it was one of those records you'd have to have